Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Tech Republic and our webcast today, which is brought to you by Google. My name is James Hilliard. Happy to be on board as the moderator for this event. And we've got three folks on board that are going to be sharing with all of you today and talking about how businesses are thriving with Google Apps. Our featured guests come to us from Smart Practice, Kathy Fister on board, the IT manager and business support lead there. And Kathy, appreciate you taking time and sharing your story with us today. Thank you. Glad to be here. Happy to share. Kathy joined by a teammate, Kyle Gherkin. He's the Mac System Administrator and the Help Desk Supervisor. So you all know by that uh, title that he's a busy guy, but taking time to join us today and uh, share some more kind of the technical side of the house. And Kyle, appreciate your time today. Thank you, James. Glad to be here as well. Joining us from Google, the Google Apps Marketing Manager is Maureen Bradford. And Maureen's actually going to be kicking us off here in just a moment, kind of giving an overview. Uh, we definitely have some folks on board that are not familiar with some of the offerings of Google Apps. So Maureen's going to lay that out for us, give us some uh, kind of good foundation setting about some of the offerings. And then we're going to kick it over to Kathy and Kyle to really talk about how they made a choice to switch over to Google Apps. So that's what we're doing. Uh, Maureen, thank you for being on board and taking time today. Uh, James, thank you, and also thank you to all of the attendees who have carved out time to join us for this conversation. Absolutely. We've got a great turnout today. And one of the great things we like and in, in why we do these events live, it's going to be available on demand. So if for some reason you have to duck out or a fire comes up in your IT shop, of course, deal with that. But we are recording today's event, so you'll be able to come back to the on demand. But the live version, we'd love to take your questions and comments. So utilize that question comment pane, lower portion of your player. Type in those questions anytime throughout the presentation and we'll uh, address as many as we can really today, some during the presentation, some at the very end during our Q&A session. So uh, with that, really what I want to do, I want to turn things over to Maureen right now, and we'll kind of lay that foundation of what Google offers to the enterprise, and then we will uh, hear that story from our team at Smart Practice. So with that, Maureen, I will turn things over to you. Thank you, James. Briefly, before we uh, give the baton to Smart Practice, I wanted to summarize what Google Enterprise covers, just to lay the groundwork for all of us here today. Google Enterprise has about 1,000 people working in it, and we focus on four key product areas. Uh, just as this slide outlines here, the four areas include the Google Search Appliance, our Maps and Earth APIs, Postini products for archiving, uh, security, and discovery, and then finally Google Apps, which will be the focus of today's conversation. Uh, just briefly, the search appliance is used by companies. It's, it's an actual hardware appliance to help optimize their uh, search ability for their customers as well as their employees. And then our Maps products are the APIs which customers may use for their own websites. There are four key elements um, that Google takes into consideration when we're working on these products. Uh, those four elements include, number one, innovation. So we are uh, constantly sending updates to our customers. In fact, for 2010 alone, we've done over 60 different feature innovations. They happen automatically. There is not a, a, a manual download required for those. Uh, number two, we want to make sure that we are doing um, innovation that is affordable and reliable. So with our economies of scale, we have uh, made a very attractive price point, which we'll um, get into in a moment. And third, uh, we manage the, the products themselves in the cloud for Google Apps and Postini as an example, so there is no infrastructure for IT managers at our customers to run. And then finally, we have built-in redundancy um, when we make sure that our data isn't at vulnerable endpoints so that we are providing more security and reliability. And Maureen, when some of these new features get rolled out, you're not waiting for a specific day every week or every month. It's, hey, as it's ready, you're going to get it out there and, and get it into users' hands, correct? Correct. We do not have a designated day. It happens automatically. All right, excellent. Uh, moving on to the next slide, just to outline what is included in Google Apps and Postini, our lineup. Uh, three main categories of, of features are available. The categories are in messaging, collaboration, and security and archiving. By messaging, it includes Gmail, which uh, most of the, the attendees on this call I believe would be familiar with. For our Google Apps Premier Edition, we offer 25 gigabytes of storage per inbox, uh, search, and mobile access. We also provide Google Talk, instant messaging, voice, and video chat for all users, and calendar. Under our collaboration section, we offer document collaboration for word processing, for spreadsheets, as well as presentations. 
we have uh, a product called Sites, which is included in the Google Apps Suite, which is essentially an, um, a very easy web page and collaboration tool for uh, both intranets as well as uh, extranets. People use this sometimes for their public-facing websites. Uh, but they're, they're an, an exceptional product for team collaborations, sharing, etc. I use about five of them for various projects a day. We also provide Google Video, which is a secure YouTube for your business. Um, so you can provide training videos just to your employees uh, using the Google YouTube infrastructure. The third of the three categories for Google Apps and Postini is around uh, security and archiving. And why don't we go into those in a little bit more detail on the next slide. The first covers security for email and web. This is offered by our Apostini products. And this is a way to reduce network traffic, to remove uh, unwanted email, um, and also make sure that it is a customizable solution. So it's flexible. You can assign your own properties as an IT manager for your employees. In addition to email and web security, our Postini products also offer email archiving. Um, this slide here that I've just mentioned references what archiving uh, from a Google approach means. Well, we have constantly focused on organizing huge amounts of data. You know, our, our mantra is to organize the world's information. So how do we provide that while also enabling easy and fast searchability? Uh, we do that for our search products, and it's, it's an, uh, a very logical step for us to offer this for email archiving as well. So the benefit for IT managers is that um, the burden is, uh, for e-discovery is then put on HR and legal where it belongs, where they can customize what they're looking for and doesn't use up precious IT resources. We offer various archiving products, one-year and 10-year retention policies. And the last slide I'll, I'll mention just briefly is regarding the kinds of customers who have adopted uh, Google Apps and Postini products. What you see on this slide is a variety of different uh, businesses and organizations that use our products. They range from Genentech to uh, Capgemini to um, European companies such as The Guardian for publishing and the Jaguar Land Rover and Vallejo. Uh, the main point here is that we cover the gamut from large businesses adopting Google products, Google Apps and, and Postini, to mid-market businesses such as Smart Practice, which is here with us today, to small organizations and nonprofits and EDU. And with that, I'll pass the baton over to Kathy. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Maureen. Um, let's talk about uh, a little bit about who we are before we get into our, our process. I want to let you know we're a small privately owned company here in Phoenix, Arizona. Started four years ago by uh, a dental hygienist and her entrepreneur husband. She saw that there was a need for dentists to market their businesses a little better, more efficiently. So it's grown from that, literally the mom and pop in the garage, to uh, selling them print, medical supplies. We've gotten into medical apparel. And we've also got into allergens, uh, testing and, and whatnot for allergies. We've got uh, our sales come through uh, quite a few sources. We've got web, catalog, email. We have inbound sales reps. And then we have outbound sales reps that have assigned accounts. And most of our outbound sales reps are actually telecommuters. And we're spread all over the place. We've got several buildings here in Phoenix. We have some retail stores. We've got warehouses. And we actually have some association with some companies in several countries. And as of today, we have 516 active Google accounts. Most of those are for every employee has got their own. And then also we have several like information addresses and group addresses that we use. Uh, talking about where we were, back in the day, uh, our policy was if it wasn't broken, don't, don't fix it. And so that left us kind of stuck with some outdated software and hardware. So we were back in sort of the dark ages. We were on Novell GroupWise 6.5 with Postini. Uh, we did add Postini after we went with, with GroupWise for quite a while, and we liked that. And we had a lot of issues, and you can see them listed there. One was our old version of GroupWise was going to lose support with Novell. Uh, we were having a lot of database crashes. Some of them were due to hardware, some were due to corruption, but you know we would be down. Sometimes it was just a matter of server reboot. Sometimes we'd be down a couple hours. And our local support, we really came down to one company that had one person who really still knew the version of GroupWise that we were running. So that was kind of a, of a challenge. We also have a lot of Mac users. We have our own creative department here. And the Mac client wasn't really very friendly at all. And at that version of GroupWise, the online 
portal was just, oh, it was ugly, that interface. Uh, we were also running out of server space, and our version didn't allow us to do any, any mobile access. So Kyle came into our environment in that situation, and he looked at it and came up with an idea, and I'm going to turn it over to him to explain. Yeah, I was uh, a big fan of Google and Google Apps. I'd been using them, you know, personally before that and, and really liked the product. Um, but I didn't really think about it for, for the business, uh, mainly because it, that wasn't my job. There was another guy who managed email here, and, and I, was, uh, I was just working as a Mac administrator at the time. Uh, but, uh, you know, during one of our uh, increasingly frequent crashes uh, with GroupWise, you know, I, I was uh, – logging into a, my Google Mail account in the meantime, and I sort of jokingly mentioned, hey, you know, we wouldn't have this problem if we all just choose Google. Uh, but, and that, and that started out as a little joke, but it kind of planted the seed in my head, and I started thinking about it and thinking, well, wait a minute, why, why don't we just use Google? That, that could be a viable option. So the more I thought about it, the more I, I liked the idea and thought it really could work for our company. Uh, so I, I wrote a proposal and, and pitched it to uh, various managers eventually was able to get uh, the, our VP of technology to greenlight a pilot program. And then we had a, a long pilot program, uh, ended up lasting about nine months, uh, and it really kind of had to, to fight for it. There was at least a couple times in that nine months where it looked like it was dead and buried, but uh, continued to fight. And with the support of key people like, like Kathy here, uh, we were able to eventually get the, the go-ahead and uh, have them look back. Hey, Kyle, let me ask a question here about that initial proposal. And I know we'll talk more throughout the presentation today, but that initial proposal to get the pilot passed, I'm guessing that there are a few folks listening to us today that have maybe made a pitch and it hasn't gone through. Can you point to one or two things that you put in that proposal to just get to the pilot stage that you think might benefit others? Well, the, you know, I focused, I mean, one thing I, foc I focused on a couple different issues. One, I really tried to address the security concerns because I think it's definitely a shift in mindset. You know, uh, IT tends to be, uh, I think, in general sort of control freak in nature. So, you know, they want, they're used to having everything in-house and it's a server that you can go touch physically if you have to. And those sorts of, uh, that sort of mentality is something that I really addressed and said, you know, there's, there is another way to look at this, and there's a lot of advantages to having, uh, to leveraging Google's resources and letting them do things um, that they have their expertise in that aren't necessarily our expertise. So that was that was one of the things I really focused on with the conceptual shift there, uh, and trying to sell that. Now, that it makes sense, and I've heard that from other folks that have gone through and shared their stories with us here at Tech Republic. So appreciate that, folks. Seeing a lot of good questions coming in here. Uh, Karen, Tim, Christine, as well. Got James and Carl with some questions as well. So folks, keep them coming in. You too, Adam. Keep the questions coming to us. We'll uh, bring more of these up as we go through the presentation. Right now, though, let me turn it back over to the Smart Practice team. Okay, thank you, James. So here's what we did. We kind of, while we were doing the pilot, we looked at a couple options. We looked at upgrading GroupWise, and we actually installed a little test and played around with that. We looked at doing uh, Microsoft Exchange, uh, again, you know, one of those industry standards that we thought we should at least attempt to, to evaluate. And then we had Google Apps, and those were the, really the only things that we, we considered looking at. Then there were several factors in our decision. And there we go. One of it is always dollars, right? Especially in this economy, every company is looking at what they've got. So for GroupWise, because our equipment was so old, we were going to have to get all new servers. We were not on any maintenance uh, thing there where we could upgrade for part of our maintenance, so we were going to have to pay upgrade fees. Exchange just was expensive, uh, not only the cost of that, but because nobody's really familiar with that. We also um, you can tell we were Novell and we had a lot of Macs, so we're really not a Microsoft shop, so we didn't have the expertise and it wasn't our, our thing to go. And the nice thing about Google, one of the things that pushed us this way was there was really no setup fee and we could easily budget. We just had our annual fee for a number of licenses, no surprises going forward on that, so that made it look uh, very appealing. The other thing we looked at was uh, support and service. Everybody looks at that. User setup in, in Google, piece of cake, very easy to do. Uh, we didn't have to go buy any new servers. We didn't have to maintain servers. 
Uh, that was really nice. Uh, Google has a great uptime record, and they have a, a dashboard available that you can actually go and review and see their uptime. And then the few times that we've had some downtime, they've actually given us a credit back on our account, extended our service. So that was a pretty nice uh, benefit to get. And then the next one, this is a big one for a lot of people, security, fear of the clouds. Oh, our data is not going to be safe. What are we going to do if they're down? What if we're not connected to the Internet? I mean, it's just the whole cloud computing uh, and software as a service was tough to, to sell to people because it was just kind of a new concept to us. And our rebuttal to that was Google's got a lot more people to throw to problems than we do. You know, we have one Unix admin, we have one Novell admin who is also doubling as our email person. Google's got a ton more people, uh, a lot more facility, and it's just definitely they can guarantee that it's a lot safer than, than we could. Kathy, I've heard that before as well. Was that kind of one of those duh type things that came up? It was like, oh, wow, if we really just simplified and look back, of, of course they've got more people. There's this huge organization. We're, we're 516 at the best. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And some of the other people that we talked to, the same thing, they had the uh, the fear of it's out of our control. I went to an off-site conference while we were in the, the middle of this, and there was one person who was just adamant that it is completely unsafe, and the rest of the crowd was like, dude, uh, get, get with the reality of the world. It is very safe. Gotcha. Okay, so we, we uh, put our process in. Kyle talked about this a little bit. We had some select uh, users, some IT folks, and then some other users that we thought could handle change uh, and fairly evaluate. I was one of the IT users, and I'll tell you right now, I, I'm the change, if it doesn't work for me right away, I get very frustrated. And it, I was sold after a while. I did bug Kyle a little bit with some questions on some things, but it sold me. It was much better than group-wise. I loved a lot of stuff about it, so I was able to do a little persuasion on my end. Uh, we also talked to some current Google Apps customers and their experiences, and they were like, man, this was the best thing we ever did. So that was pretty appealing. Uh, we finally, finally convinced everybody, okay, here's what we're going to go. And then we hooked up with a third-party integrator just to get our migration and our training done. Again, we're not the experts. We're a small shop, so we thought we could benefit from using somebody else to help us. So more details here. We went and created everybody's Google accounts. Uh, we moved everyone to Google Calendar in one weekend. Uh, we just did Calendar first for a couple reasons. One was just to give everybody exposure to apps. And we didn't want to move people over in piecemeal because we really didn't want to support two corporate calendars. So what we did is we migrated everybody's current year events, gave them a Google account. We did some training. We said training is mandatory, uh, as much as we could make it mandatory. And we said, if you want us to migrate your data, we will. But if you don't, better for us. But we made that optional. And then what we did is we started working on mail. So we moved employees over uh, by department for the most part, about 40 users or so. We'd start on Friday afternoon. Again, it was, uh, you know, if you want us to move your email, we'll be happy to do so. If you don't want us to, it was funny. Uh, anecdotally, we had somebody who's like, yes, please move my email, and they had three messages in their GroupWise account. So we're like, thanks for having us do that for you. Uh, there were some tricks about maintaining the mail in two systems, and Kyle's going to briefly explain what we had to do. Yeah, because, you know, it would have been great to make a clean cut and just you did say, okay, starting on Monday, everyone's on Google, um, it, but because we had to migrate the mail, and we actually, we actually did migrate uh, everybody's mail, uh, so, so, and that made it, um, you know, a more lengthy process. We weren't able to migrate everybody in a single weekend just because the, the sheer volume of mail and the number of users um, wasn't something that, that we were able to do. So we had we did it, break it out in those those weekly uh, sessions, also for training purposes. Kathy mentioned, but um, as a result of that, you know, we needed to have some people using Google uh, as they were cut over, their mail was migrated and they'd been trained. But then have other people still using Groupwise when they hadn't been trained yet. And um, you can set it up in Google so that you have what, essentially what's called a dual delivery system um, where the mail is actually still coming into your server, your existing server, so in our case, group-wise, uh, but then 
the mail for the accounts that you've switched over, you just have those individual accounts forwarding that mail on to Google. And Google, of course, is still can be used as the outgoing mail server, and you can you can still use the your domain address and everything before you change your MX record. So it's a little bit of you having to you know mess with some settings and make sure you can do the forwarding right on your current email, but it is something that you know, you're capable of doing, and that's kind of nice because it allows you to do that if you need to have this phased deployment, send stuff from, you know, still you have people using Google Mail and using your old server, you know, uh, contemporaneously for, for a few months or however long it takes to migrate. Okay, so once we got everybody moved over, we didn't just abandon them. We did a few things going forward. One is we started doing weekly Google tips uh, just, did you know how to do this? Did you know how to do this? Uh, how to do labels? Here's a better way to do search. Uh, with a lot of graphics in them, we sent them out, got some good feedback of that. Kyle and I sat in one of the uh, training rooms for about four hours one day and just said, hey, come in, ask us your questions. Uh, how is this working for you? Uh, you know, are you having issues? And that was, that was fairly well attended. And then even today, we send out ongoing news notices because Google keeps adding cool stuff. So as it comes in, I evaluate it and say, yeah, this is probably worth sending on to everybody or, yeah, we're probably not really using that, so I'm not going to bombard them with a lot. But it, it's helped keep people engaged and help them to learn a little more as we're going along. So here's our, here's our timeline that we've been talking about how long it was. So we really started piloting in May of 2008. And in December is when we finally made our decision. And that was a long, painful process of trying to fight to make it really happen. And it was just convincing the, the folks above us to say, yeah, this is really the right way to go. But once we started going, we did calendar in February, uh, and then we just started moving email right away, and then we finished up uh, in May. So once we got going, we, we jammed on it, but it took us a while to get there. So, of course, it wasn't the smoothest process. Uh, there's always something that happens. And probably no surprise if you're technical out there that the biggest problem was with our users. Uh, gosh, we have, uh, they were all used to using a desktop client with GroupWise. They didn't all understand even the concept of a web browser. Uh, seriously, would people like, would say, go, go to your, open your browser, and they would just stare at you. So we had to do some basic training. We also had some issues with GroupWise allowed you to not have a password, password signed, or it saved your password. We had a lot of people who saved their password, you know, seven years ago, didn't know, so we had to play around with that a lot. Uh, we had people that didn't show up for training as much as we wanted to make it mandatory. You can't control everybody. So then you get the questions, and, and you're like, well, we covered it in training. Uh, you deal, you deal with that every day. So the other thing is it was just change. And for a lot of people, change is scary. It's bad. They, they don't appreciate it. Um, they just want to keep doing business as usual. And then this was a little surprising, and I guess it shouldn't have been, but the toughest group that we had to, to convert over to like it are our execs. And we're actually still struggling with them uh, to fully embrace it today. We had a couple other issues. One was uh, we had a lot of people with really huge mailboxes, and we'd start them on Friday, and Kyle would babysit them over the weekend, and he'd have to restart them. And my advice there would be either don't migrate old email data or make everybody really clean it up. But we had one person that took about six days to finally get all of their email migrated over. We also had a challenge with we had some info uh, email boxes that were at different domains that actually were all under one account, and Kyle's going to really quickly explain how he got around that. Yeah, the, in our old system, uh, you know, we have the various you know, info at in our different domains, smart practice, you know, smart health, smart scrubs, whatever, different business units we have. And, uh, you know, in, in Google, you can only have one uh, address, info at, and then you can have all those different domains be aliases, but you still only have one account. So all that mail was ultimately coming to one account. GroupWise technically was the same way, but the way that we got around in GroupWise is we had a server sitting in front of the GroupWise server, a Unix box, that used something called a vert user file that then, as that mail came in, distributed to the proper end, end account, uh, end user account. And so um, Google didn't offer that functionality in that way. So the, and that was, and I was told by some people fairly high up that it was, you know, definitely had to be that way in the new system. So the way that I was able to get around it was 
we took um, just that, that one account, the info ad account in Google, and all the mail you know, went into there naturally. And so from there, I set up filters that would, that would do forwarding, because in Google, you can set up filters that then forward to a specific email address, so then forwarded to the uh, end user in question. And that, was, and that was our way of creating the same functionality in, in a different way. Okay, so the other thing is we found out, GroupWise had a nice uh, chat room feature that uh, Google does not currently have. I'm hoping they'll develop it. We also had some problems. We were able to email directly out of our customer relation tool. We had to find a third-party product to allow us to do that. And then when we first did it, uh, the offline access was, it was kind of flaky, but they've since fixed that. So some of the benefits, those are the issues, but here's some benefits. Marine's already talked about some of these, but the search is just awesome. And there's a new feature that you could, allows you to search in both mail and docs, which is great. You just spend less time organizing. It's a lot easier to find stuff. Archive feature was another one that was a little difficult to get people to embrace. You know, you don't have to delete your mail. You've got a lot of space there. So if you think you're going to need it, just archive it. You can always find it later. Uh, now having remote access was great. Not only can we now get people on their smartphones, but they can actually do it on the, by themselves. It's easy enough that they don't have to involve IT. And anywhere in the world, if you have a browser and internet, you get to your, your mail, your apps. It's, it's pretty awesome. We've had a lot of people embrace Google Sites. Really all I did is one presentation that said, here's, here's Sites. Here's you know, a great source for putting together your data, making your own wiki. And they all went off and kind of made their own. We've got a corporate communication one. Obviously, IT has one. And then I'm going to show you one right here. This is our charity team. They created the site without anybody from IT. Uh, obviously, they have somebody who knows a little bit of HTML, but they put all of their documents on there. And again, we didn't have to do anything to support it. So that was pretty cool. And then more of these, uh, and again, Marines mentioned some of these, but it's platform independent. That was important to us because we have all the Mac users and we have PC users, so they can use whatever browser they want to use. We did have some problems with Internet Explorer, so we recommended that people didn't use that, you know, gave up using IE. Um, again, the constant enhancements without us having to roll stuff out. It allows everybody to be on the same version. It, you know, we don't have to go get users to reboot their machines. They just log in and they've got the new, new features. We also really are now starting to use Docs quite a bit. It allows us to do some nice collaborative work. And it's really convenient to just have everything in one reference. Again, you just use the search in your Docs and you can find what you're looking for. And we also did some forms. So I'm going to show you a quick form here. This is just a simple toner request. It, the message gets sent to our help desk via an update, and the users just go in. They type it. They don't have to make a phone call. Um, just simple, easy enough to do. And we've got other people in the company who are using forms. Again, we didn't even have to help them set them up. They just figured out how to do it on their own. So you might be asking, what did the employees think? Well, we got some, some feedback. And initially, there were a lot of people going, why are we changing? We don't want to change. Uh, you know, this is going to be hard. We had a few people who said, oh, this is great. I can't believe we already haven't done this. And then the bulk of them, though, they're like, nah, I got email. Does it work? That's all I really care about. And it, the nice thing is the majority have accepted it. They looked for the new features. And just to give you an idea, we do an annual IT survey for our uh, company. and. We did three months after this rolled out was when that survey was due. And at that point, 83.8% .8 said email completely or usually supports them. And then a year later when we did the follow-up, as people got used to it, 95.9%. So 96% of the folks are supportive of our email solution. So that was pretty good. What do we wish we could have done differently? Well. We wish that we could have not migrated data. We wish that we could have just uh, done a clean, everybody's on calendar and mail, and we were moving on with our lives, because that caused a lot of, of, well, weekend work, for one thing, and it just would have been nice to start completely fresh. We wish we'd spent more time with our execs ahead of time. I mean, these are the folks that, obviously, they're the ones signing the, the bill. Um, 
they're generally, and I'm going to make a stereotypical comment here, but they're generally older. Uh, they're not as sometimes uh, embracing technology. So we really needed to babysit them a little bit more. And finally, I, we wish we'd done it sooner. We wish we had addressed the group-wise shortcomings a little sooner, realized that we had to do something, and we wish we hadn't, hadn't piloted it for so long uh, just testing it. We wish we j could have just been like, let's go, let's move on, and be happy with our lives. Maureen, that was something I noticed when you had the timeline up there. Uh, this seemed to be a longer timeline than I have seen with other companies, large or small, that have made the move to Google Apps. I'm not being critical, but I was going to ask, what, you know, what, what made it draw out so long, and, and do you think there is something that you could have done or you can share with this audience where they can shorten that so that they don't go through a longer process like you did? I think you need to get to the decision makers uh, a little harder and heavier uh, just to say, hey, really, this is the way to go. Uh, we could have perhaps piloted with a few more users just to get their feel for it. Um, the other thing is we're a pretty small shop, so it's easy for stuff to get on the back burner for us. So, you know, we'd go along for a month without pushing it, and that, that was our, our mistake. We should have been like, okay, we're, we're, we're good. When can we go? Gotcha. Let's do this. Uh, we're just over the uh, halfway mark of the presentation, and we've got a good 20, 25 minutes to spend with questions, and we've got a whole bunch here from our uh, listening audience today. As we move into the questions, I do want to direct everyone to the right-hand side of their user console. You'll see those related resources that contact Google. The uh, longer URL is on the screen right now. You see it's google.com slash apps slash contact. That is the best place for you to go to get more information. If you want more information about security, which is actually a question from Surrey that we're going to be addressing in just a moment, uh, you want more information, we don't cover something you're looking for today, go ahead and uh, use that link. You'll be able to fill out a form and reach out and get some more information from Google. If you're looking for tools to help you migrate from uh, GroupWise or if you're looking to move from Exchange, you can request more information about some of the tools that are available, things like that. Um, Kathy, let me do this, and, and Kyle, I encourage you to jump in as well. Kind of going back to some comments we talked a bit earlier, but Surrey's saying, and, and you brought it up here, Kathy, uh, with no disrespect, Respect, that older generation of your executives, the question from Surrey, give us some key points to help overcome these objections from that older generation regarding security and using the cloud solution. I'm going to take that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that, you know, sometimes uh, one way to look at it would be through uh, in the use of a metaphor of something that maybe they are accustomed to. Uh, one, of, one, of, one of the analogies that you know I used in, in the proposal was uh, was with banking. I said you know like obviously uh, we could theoretically you know construct a vault on premises and keep all of our money in there and do all that stuff, but that would seem really silly. You know people. Uh, obviously are accustomed to the idea of the, the, that a bank can do that better than they can, you know, privately, and, and that's just not something a business should be spending their resources on. Uh, and so, you know, in, in a lot of ways, the thinking of Google as the bank uh, in, this, in, in this instance is, is the way that, uh, you know, is one way that I tried to, to look at it or present it. And I think that some of stuff like that can help. Uh, in terms of an analogy of something they are accustomed to and it, where, hey, this is another business that has certain resources and has the ability to leverage technologies that we don't have internally or, or would be hard for us to do on that scale internally. And so it, it's reasonable to turn that over to them. Good stories always go a long way. Kyle, let me keep it with you. Jonathan on board, an IT security pro. He heard just say that some of the IT security pros can be control freaks. Uh, some can, some cannot. I think Jonathan's saying that he's not really, but what he did want to get at here is the idea of the how did you know that Google wasn't looking at your email? They weren't uh, snooping around, things like that. Was it simply that you, Kyle, just took kind of a leap of faith, hey, I trust Google, or was there something more formal that, they, that Google was able to provide you to know that, hey, this information will be secure, it won't be looked at, we're comfortable with what they have in place? 
Yeah, I mean, basically what Google, uh, you know, had, had presented to us is that they have an auditing process, and, and you know, maybe Maureen can speak to this uh, in some detail, but that they have an auditing process where if any uh, Google user is touching your data, there's a log of it, and it's something that can go back and be checked uh, by, by other Google employees. So there's, there's no, you know, unless they have sort of a reason to get into your account, like you've granted them access to look at an issue or something like that, they won't be getting into it. And if they are, it's going to be flagged uh, that that's something that happened. So um, again, I guess as far as the, the more technical details of that or, or any further elaboration, maybe Maureen can speak to it. Sure. Yes, Google Apps is SAS Type 2 um, certified, so we have done that audit. Uh, there was a question about HIPAA certification. We do not certify for HIPAA com compliance at this time. There uh, is a, a very detailed summary of all of this available on google.com slash apps. It's at the, right at the top of the page, trust and security, where you can find more information. And we also have this as a, a topic that's covered in detail in our help section. Let me keep it with you, Maureen. Tim, I believe Tom was out there as well. Uh, liked hearing what they heard from Kathy and Kyle in terms of doing those ongoing tips on how to do this, how to work with docs, how to do this in email, labels, et cetera. Um, things like that, are they uh, created, Maureen, by Google? Are they by your integration partners? Are they the uh, companies that have gone Google? Is it a whole collection of sharing between all three of those entities? Well, uh, most of them are done by Google itself. Uh, we have them available through RSS, or you can get notifications by email. But we do have a bunch of tips that are on the Google site. Again, google.com slash apps. And right on the home page, you can see keep track of new Google Apps features. Another area that would be of interest for many of the people on the call would be our Google Apps channel on YouTube. We have a variety of videos and quick tips, user tips uh, in video format. In fact, we call them our sushi videos because they're very short. They're about two minutes or less for each one. And they're available if you just search on YouTube for the Google Apps channel. All right, excellent. Again, folks, we've got plenty of time for questions. A lot of people already in the queue, but if you still have additional questions, submit those to us. If we're <laughs> unable to get through all the questions today, which odds are we probably will uh, be unable to get to everything, we will be forwarding on questions that go in and answer to Maureen and the team over at Google. If it's something specific for Kyle and Kathy, we'll get that over in their hands too and work to get some email responses after the event. So let's continue on with some more questions here. Um, Thomas has a question here. Kathy, maybe I'll uh, throw this your direction. In terms of uh, a bandwidth, did you see that your bandwidth usage, did it have to be increased because of the move to Google Apps? Were there any bandwidth savings? What can you share? Well, we did have concerns about that, but to be honest, after we started monitoring it, it really didn't change. It didn't fluctuate a great deal. So I wouldn't say we had any savings, but we did not have to increase it either. All right. And Kyle, uh, dead in the water, you mentioned that a bit earlier on, that there were a couple times that you thought, hey, this is not going to move forward for whatever reason, that this move to Google wouldn't happen. Can you give us an example, Karen, asking one or two of those situations that made it look like it was dead in the water, and, and again, maybe what you did to overcome it? Um, yeah, well, one, one of the situations that was a little bit unique is when, we, for, when I first brought this to the table, uh, we didn't have uh, an IT director on staff at the time. Uh, we, uh, we were in between IT directors, and so that was that was a, an issue in terms of when the new IT director came on. You know, I had already pitched it, and we were kind of piloting it, but of course he wasn't part of that. So then had to sort of start over with him and sell it to him from from scratch. And so and and then you know. Uh, and he had to start evaluating it from from his standpoint. So that was, you know, that was a little bit of a setback just in terms of circumstantially the way things worked out. Um, other other than that, there was there was just a point where it, it seemed to lo have lost traction uh, as far as people, um, you know, they they'd seen it. You know, we were, you know, certain people were behind it, but it was like, okay, you know, do we really want to spend the money? And you know, that's always that's always a tough thing when it just comes up to the dollars. It's like, well, right now we're not, we've got this old solution, and we're not spending anything. And sure, we may have these other advantages, but do we really want to spend the money? And you know, uh, budgets are always always tight, and that's and that was another thing that had to be overcome. Well, and especially if we go back to your timeline when you were doing this, if I remember what I saw on the screen, it was late 2008, early 2000. So it was not a good budget time for anybody to be to make those types of decisions. 
Exactly. Yeah. Um, Carrie and a, and a couple other folks on, on board as well, and, and Maureen had another sh- uh, slide that we had prepared, and I'm actually going to bring that up right now, talking about uh, being able to integrate other applications with Google Apps. And there is a marketplace, and so, Maureen, I'm going to invite you just for a quick moment kind of talk about that and what are some of the other uh, offerings that, that are available to folks out there. Yes, we do have a marketplace available, google.com uh, slash app slash marketplace, uh, which is a, a area where developers of complementary applications that tie in nicely with Google Apps can provide uh, those for uh, people to start using with their Google Apps platform. They run the gamut from CRM integration. We had a, a large integration with salesforce.com, uh, for example, about two years ago, uh, where they integrated key points of Google Apps, but we have a variety of other vendors in there. Uh, they, they also cover expense reporting, business intelligence, uh, additional tools and tips in, in spreadsheets, etc. So again, I encourage you to check out our marketplace. We uh, are adding new applications almost every day. And they right. also include scoring um, and feeder, uh, user feedback. And again, additional, uh, is that link from the Google Apps site as well? Is there another URL we should direct people to, Maureen? Nope, the best place to start is Google Apps or Google.com slash apps. It's right there on the home page. All right, cool. Let's go through uh, a couple other questions here. Uh, Kathy, let's just recap. I believe I saw something of uh, 516 uh, type mailboxes that you have. Is that 516 users? Uh, Faye wanting to know exactly how many users did you migrate? Well, we migrated 420 users. And then we've added some new employees, which is kind of nice to be able to say we've done that. We've also added some more boxes, like our help desk has one box just for them that they actually proxy into. So we've added some of those. We've got you know, like a shipping hotline that we created a, a, an email account for for that as well. So 420 migrated now at 516. Adam was the first person on board today that asked a question, and it was very simple. BlackBerry integration. Kyle, let me ask you again. You guys are distributed. We saw that you're in at least 12, I think, different locations. You have partners in different states, different countries. A lot of mobility going on in the field that you service. Uh, Did you do any integration for BlackBerry? What are kind of your mobile uh, operations, and how have you dealt with that? We didn't have uh, an official uh, mobile support. We have, we definitely have various users, uh, you know, executives and and others that are using different smartphones, whether it be a BlackBerry, whether it be an iPhone. Um, you know, some people are on Android now, et cetera. But uh, so because we didn't have, you know, an official BlackBerry support, we didn't have like a, a Bez server or anything like that in place. Um, but you know, Google has some nice tools to really make it easy to to, ha- to use on these mobile um, devices. And with Blackberries, you know, there's actually like an app that you just download and it displays your mail. And you can do the same thing with calendar and documents, things like that. It's very similar to the web experience, so uh, it's, it's a fairly seamless thing. The the applications for the, or for the iPhone uh, and Android are even better uh, than the, than the BlackBerry one, in my opinion. But, uh, but it works for, for all those devices. There are ways, I believe, to integrate it with the, the BlackBerry Enterprise Server because uh, I've seen some, some instructions on that. And, and, all, and there's instructions for all this stuff available from Google that are pretty easy to follow to set any of this up. Um, but, but like I said, I don't have personal experience with using the, the BlackBerry Enterprise Server. Maureen, let me maybe get you to quickly comment here for Adam and the rest of the folks who might be in, interested in that in terms of the process with those bed servers and integration. Sure. The um, the Bez Server integration service is available through um, the same website, google.com slash apps. At the top of the page, you'll see under um, how it works, there is a section apps on mobile devices. So you'll uh, be able to access the Google Apps connector for, for Bez. All right. Um, one of the other interactive features we have on our webcast is a, a survey that we like to push out to our audience members just to make sure we get uh, some feedback on, on how the event worked and, and let us continue to bring you some informational events here. So I want to push that survey out now. Have your pop-up blockers turned off or simply hit and hold the Control-C button for the next three, two, one. And I'll push that out to everybody. So appreciate you taking a quick moment to uh, answer that survey there. Let us, um, Kathy, let me uh, clarify with you. Did I hear correctly that uh, almost everybody, uh, I know you had the browser confusion and some crickets when you said just go to your browser, but is that how most people within smart practice access uh, their email now is through the browser, through the web interface? 
Yeah, the, the vast majority of them. Uh, it, just they have it bookmarked on their computer. They get in, they log in, they're good to go. Uh, we've got a lot of people now checking their mail from home that they didn't used to do, so that's kind of nice. And then, as Kyle said, we have a few people who, they're on their phones, uh, especially if you've got an iPhone. It, it's really nice for that, and I, I've got mine hooked up to my BlackBerry, but the vast majority are just doing the, the browser. Uh, Maureen, let me bring it over to you because I know uh, in talking to some other uh, folks that have gone Google, some have gone with kind of a mixed environment, letting some people stay on, uh, say, uh, Outlook to use it. Adam, Karen, a few others kind of asking about that. One, can you use your full Outlook client if they want uh, for whatever reason to st uh, and still use Google on the back end? Uh, talk to me about what kind of options folks have there. Yep, Google Apps offers a range of options to help with migration from Outlook and Exchange. And if the users want to continue using Outlook to access their email and calendars, we have a couple of different options for them. Uh, the first is integration with Outlook through our Google Apps Sync for Microsoft Outlook tool. And the second is to be able to access your um, Google Apps email from Outlook using IMAP. So you can use that protocol or use our Google Apps Sync tool for Microsoft Outlook. Both of these are available on our Help Center, google.com slash apps. I think I know the answer to Jackie's question, but Maureen, let me just kind of have you follow up here. Uh, Jackie, their CRM ERP software needs Outlook to send out email. Can Google Apps integrate there and, and still support that? Yes. I thought that would be the answer. <laughs> So, good stuff. A lot of good questions still coming in here. Again, folks, if you have something that we have not covered yet, please go ahead and submit that. Uh, John has a question, Kathy, about your use there at Smart Practice of uh, Docs. Did you move completely away from using the uh, Office suite? Are you uh, just using Docs now or uh, are you using some kind of mix there? Uh, we're using a mixture. That's a, an interesting question because right now we're evaluating our Microsoft Office usage and trying to convert people to use OpenOffice for some solutions. Uh, Docs is, is good for sharing. There's still some stuff that you just can't do that you can do in other applications. So while internally a lot of us are using it to share information, there's still a lot of Microsoft Office usage in our environment. All right. Scrolling through some other questions that have Come in here trying to find some uh, additional questions that we haven't covered yet, some different themes here. Um, here's one, Maureen, and, and again, smart practice deals with and in, in supporting those within, uh, you know, kind of the, the medical vertical, healthcare type vertical there. Daniel asking Maureen, have you had a lot of adoption with healthcare companies using uh, Google Apps and uh, being supported there? Yes, I can mention a couple here. You can see some of the companies on our customers who've gone uh, Google that we highlight p publicly. Uh, home Care Assistance was an in-home care provider, Schumacher Group, which provides emergency medical um, services, as well as SF Bay Pediatrics. This is a medical group right here in Northern um, California. Yeah, I'm trying to see. I just put up, again, the slide we had earlier in the presentation uh, here. It looks like the medicine shop pharmacy would be one of those, again, tied to that vertical. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. So uh, there's a, a list there. I uh, hope that uh, helps there. Let's scroll through some more questions here and uh, and bring some more of these to the surface. Um, yeah, here, here's one that came in from Scott. Obviously, we heard from Kathy and team. It was about 420 users. They've grown since then, 516-plus accounts. Scott, though, saying, hey, we've got 150,000 full-time equivalents who work in the office, the remote, they're coming in via VPN. Can Google Apps really support a, a global corporation? Uh, yes, the Google Apps is using the same infrastructure that we do, for example, for our consumer Gmail, which has um, hundreds of millions of users. We have about 3,000 new businesses signing up every day for Google Apps, and um, as noted uh, on our website, we have over 2 million businesses using it. So uh, we are able to scale to that level. Let me go back to Kyle and his title. If anyone joined us at the end or uh, before we kick things off here, uh, Kyle is the Mac Systems Admin, but also the Help Desk Supervisor. Uh, I'd love to just know, Kyle, what the Help Desk call volume was like uh, when you made the initial rollover and, and maybe kind of what it's like now in terms of email issues compared to when you were on 6.5. 
Well, uh, to be fair, I wasn't uh, technically the help desk supervisor back at the time, so uh, you know, I don't my my sense of the the call volume might be a little bit off, but but yeah, there were definitely you know a fair number of calls when we first made the rollover, uh, as what is to be expected anytime you do something new, you know, just just a lot of and a lot of basic stuff, just you know, how do I do this, you know, but not not really technical problems so much as usage issues. Um, so there was that, and then but since then the the, the call volume is really quite low. I mean, people. Uh, you know, people have gotten used to actually navigating through, you know, the application and using it. Um, it's it's mainly, you know, password reset requests, um, which is, you know, very basic and, and other sort of basic things like that. You know, our, uh, the, the technical issues are, are very rare, and, and if they are, it's, it's generally something that is, you know, some kind of, of issue that, that we're having um, that's a known issue or something like that that we can uh, then direct that, okay, Google has a, a noted as a known issue, it's something they're working on, uh, and we can direct that information back to the users and, and maybe give them a timeline or something. Maureen, we always have, and uh, Todd, uh, Karen, Christine, and others are definitely uh, keeping us uh, on the track here of cost. Uh, what's the best place uh, for people to get information about the costs that they would be uh, incurring should they go Google? Sure. The, the cost for Google Apps is $50 per year per user, and that includes all of the um, components that were listed on the slide, and the slide for messaging and collaboration. There are um, additional products available through Postini, as mentioned, um, for those, for example, the 10-year archiving, and uh, that is all available on our website. But again, at the highest level, it's $50 per user per year. All right. Interesting question from Robert here, Maureen. Um, how small is too small for apps? Is there, you know, if, if, if it's a, a two- or three-person shop, is that where, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense? Or, or can those uh, smallest of uh, companies still benefit? Uh, organizations of all size would benefit from it. We have a standard edition which is free for um, organizations with fewer than 50 employees and uh, that's a very good one for uh, this person to get started with. The Google App Suite is comprised of products that individuals use also, so there is no um, minimum size required in order to get on board. All right, question back over to you, Kathy. This goes back to the idea of training. And again, you had some people that were grumbling and mumbling. Some of them even uh, probably uh, skipped the trainings and didn't get there. Uh, just recap for us, what were they? Did you do webcasts like we're doing today? Were they call-in conference calls? Did you bring people into a uh, room at one of your facilities and do it in person? What were, what were some of the options that you utilized there for training? Yeah, great question. I meant to uh, go into a few more details on that earlier. What we did is uh, our third-party integrator uh, prepared some videos for us. So we brought people into the room, um, probably, you know, 20 people at a time, had them watch the video, and then we did a live Q&A and gave them a little uh, cheat sheet as they walked out the door. And Kyle and I, for the initial ones, uh, conducted those together, and then when we both memorized each other's answers in the entire video, we traded off, so it wasn't such of a, a burden on the time. And then the videos, we also made them available on, the, on Google Apps so that they could go back and look at it if they wanted to. And James, I, this is Maureen. I have a, um, just another thought for that. Um, in addition to what Kathy has just talked about with smart practice, we saw an interesting idea from another customer um, when they were going Google. Genentech was planning the deployment rollout, and they searched through their employee base on Facebook to find people who had identified themselves as having used Gmail or Google Apps, and then ask those people if they were interested in being Google uh, ambassadors for the for the day during the the big migration. Um, it, they, they were oversubscribed, and it turned out that uh, at Genentech, when they did the deployment, there was a Google expert, meaning one of the employees wearing a Google T-shirt that, um, that we provided, within 40 feet of every employee. So um, there was a, a lot of just peer-to-peer -peer, um, help and support, and it turned out that there, there wasn't a lot of help needed, but it, it, just, it just assisted with the, the overall tone and um, experience for people. 
And, and I've heard that before, and I, I'll encourage some folks, uh, obviously our Tech Republic members can uh, search on Tech Republic for Google and find more of these stories and case studies that we've done in webcast form. You can go to the YouTube channel for Google Apps and see some of these archived as well. But I've heard some really creative stories of uh, companies making these great uh, colorful posters and putting them on the wall and, you know, countdown to Google and all these things, the, the T-shirt idea. Uh, I, not, I didn't know Genentech did that. I heard that uh, similar from some other organizations. So definitely um, – there's some interesting ways that people have uh, kind of uh, hyped things up and really got people on board and, and made it uh, in, an event instead of just, hey, IT here telling us, you know, to do something different again. So uh, interesting examples, again, you can find on the YouTube channel for Google Apps or that you can find by searching over at Tech Republic. Uh, Kathy, I wanted to probably squeeze in one or two more questions here. Uh, Chad saying, Kathy, if you had to do it over, would you utilize dual delivery again, or would you do a big bang, just migrate everyone at once? I would have loved to have just migrated everybody at once. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the challenge was they all wanted their new email, uh, or their old email, rather, into their new email system. So it was just a matter of timing. What we could have done is moved everybody over and then said, we're going to just migrate your data as it goes. You're going to have it in two places for a while. I guess that would have been a solution. But, yeah, I wish we had not had to do the dual delivery. Karen putting in here, when will this be online so I can get our IT consultant to view it, Karen, uh, about 24 hours from now. So what we're going to do, we're going to wrap things up for today. We'll keep the player open for a few moments after we disconnect the audio. You can continue to submit some questions via the uh, Q&A module there. Uh, submit those questions, comments. Again, we'll forward them on to uh, Kathy and Kyle over at Smart Practice. We'll also get the questions over to Maureen over there at Google. Uh, but what will happen if any of you missed the presentation or simply want to read recap things, you will be getting a reminder email from Tech Republic that will bring you back to the on-demand version starting tomorrow, so you can view that and uh, go over some things. I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to push uh, out the uh, survey one last time here. A couple folks didn't have those pop-up blockers turned off. If you already filled out our survey, no need to do it again, but for those that just got those pop-up blockers turned off, again, you can hit Control-C right now, coming in three, two, and one. And with that, I also want to just get Maureen in here. Maureen, any one or two last tips that you want to share with the audience before we wrap things up? Sure. There was a question about how to help make the case to your colleagues internally if they're interested in going Google. And uh, I think a, a, one great idea is to um, do our Gone Google Cloud Calculator. This is a, a very short, it probably takes about three, three seconds to input size of company, et cetera, into um, a couple of question boxes, and then what gets spit out is a variety of uh, stats that, that are in PDF or presentation format or even as a, a, an email or a word processing document that you can provide to your colleagues internally. It's, it's nicely polished, it's very cool, and it's on our homepage, google.com slash apps. In addition, if you want to go on a deeper dive with our security, there are a variety of different questions that are answered, again, on google.com slash apps on the security drop-down menu. Again, that was Maureen Bradford, Google Apps Marketing Manager, also joined today by Kathy Pfister and Kyle Gherkin, both from Smart Practice. Really appreciate them being a living, breathing case study and sharing with us today here at Tech Republic. For everybody at Google, everyone at Smart Practice, and of course our entire Tech Republic team, we all want to say thank you for joining us for today's presentation. My name is James Hilliard, and we're going to wrap things up, and we do look forward to talking to you down the road. Please hold. You will now be disconnected.